Good afternoon, Western Oregon sports fans, and welcome to this edition of Wolves Weekly. I'm being joined by head coach Arne Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Coach Ferguson, coming off a big win on senior day against Dixie State. Yeah, huge win. Uh, it was a very tough ball game the first time we played them down in Dixie, which they always play well. Uh, we didn't really end up pulling away till late on a very competitive ball game. And then at home, um, our offense, defense, and special teams played to, to date the most complete game of the year. And really nice to see them get better throughout the year. And it was nice to see them put all three phases together against a, a very good Dixie ball club. And as you mentioned there, the win's always good, but having these seniors in there, mm -hmm. this was a special class for you. Tell us a little bit about these 18 seniors that came through and yeah. graduated. Uh, number one is, is the, the, these seniors have worked very hard. Uh, 15 out of the 18 have come up through the ranks as, as freshmen, as redshirt freshmen, sophomore, and been playing for us for, for quite some time. Um, to see them really play their best game at home uh, on their final home game it was really nice to see. Um, and so we expect also them to continue to get better. But there's so many Oregon kids and, and their development with our program is vital for our success. And to see them playing extremely good football at this time of the year is exciting. And maybe it was the seniors, maybe it was mm. game preparation or something like that. Mm. But all three phases of your game really seem to be working. Mm. Your special teams, your defense, and your offense. I mean, all yeah. three really seem to be clicking. The offense lifted you, actually, it was the offense and the defense, mm. lifted you out to a very quick start compared to how you were down at Dixie State. Yeah. Tell us about jumping out on top of them 21 by 21. Well, well first of all, our O-line is getting better, you know, and our quarterbacks, Evan Mazaki, um, has some more starts on his bed, hit Trevor Gates with our inside receiver and a touchdown early. Um, and I believe you're going to see Mike, I mean, uh, see Bryce Pila come through on a pick um, where there's pressure coming and he really jumped in front, great read by him, and took it to the house. You know, and he's playing very well, obviously. Um, there's 21 points right, I mean, 14 points right there. Um, and then another touchdown. Our quarterbacks and O-line are really starting to play the level of football we expect them to play. And what does it mean for you? How does it help you as a defensive unit being able to attack a little bit? Mm -hmm. And just, what does it mean getting up by 21 points? Because that's what mm -hmm. you've got to be going into all week, is you want to you get up quick. Right. And to do that, you see Trevor Roush right here also score on a run. But to, to have that early lead uh, really allowed our offensive and defense to, to be more aggressive throughout. Dude, things are not as critical on this down by down um, because you have a little bit of breathing room. Um, and nice to see our, our players did not back off at all. Um, so we end up winning the game by 42 to 7. Um, defensively, we need to be better on a drive where they did score. Um, but overall, defensively, kept them to 53 yards rushing and, and around 100 yards passing. So that's a good day against anybody. Um, then the big tale was our quarterbacks were 30, was through over 300 yards passing, and their passing efficiency and percentage were extremely high. Um, for example, Corey Bean hasn't played much to date. Came in, I believe, it was seven for eight. Um, so really good yards against our receivers, who's really coming around. And we finally got him healthy, Demario Ballard. Um, obviously, you'll see him having two touchdowns and also big plays. He had over 120 some yards, um, and that's very exciting to see him start playing like you know he's can along with the other receiving court. And it was really for you to have such a you have a deep play for that. Mm -hmm. what, what that can do to open up everything else. Tell us a little bit about what he brings to you. Well, Demario Ballard is a very very talented player. He can run. He's six seven. Um, he's still not quite 100% healthy, and I think we'll get him healthy coming into this week, 100%. Um, he can change the game. He can actually take over a game as long as we're effective at that quarterback position. Um, but also the key on this, DeMar Ballard's obviously big playability, and he's so, so hard to guard, that our O-line rushing the football, which really puts him in single coverage, um, and that's what you can't do. You know, you can't single cover. Uh, DeMar Ballard or Just Snore on a consistent basis and really the O-line and running backs dictate that. Um, so that's what's nice to see that really opens up our offense to be more effective. And Ballard might have got some of the credibility for mm. the five catches, 127 yard, two touchdown performance. But mm. as you mentioned, the quarterbacks really spread out mm -hmm. the ball. Yes. That was one of the, to me, one of the big keys. And as we'll see here in a second, a clip we have from Kyle Lavender. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is hitting the fullback out of the out of the backfield for over 20 yards. Just yeah, this is actually a touchdown and a fourth down and one play. To have that confidence where the quarterback is going to execute that. Um, and then also, uh, Kyle Lavender has soft hands, even though he's a fullback. 
Uh, we, you know, we expect him to make those plays. But really, a quarterback with a whole bunch of pressure in his face on a fourth down play, um, that's a really nice to have that confidence that he, they're going to do that and have done that. Um, so that's nice to see. But anytime you spread the ball out with nine different receivers, that means your quarterbacks are going through their reads. They're not just looking at one or two guys, and they're doing the proper progression that they've been coached. And also, obviously, the percentages of just throwing the throws that are there rather than trying to force things. Um, we have a short clip here mm -hmm. from Justin. It was just take control, of the, take control of the offensive line, control the line of scrimmage, uh, take care of the ball. And we thought, you know, basically our players were better than theirs. And if we took care of the ball, we'd win the game. But Justin Orr, you see right here, um, you know, with the mud, he didn't quite get as many balls deep as he did, but he's out running people and he's actually opened up things for tomorrow because Justin Orr has been playing better to date. Um, so it's nice to see that he, you see here, he's got two people on him right there. He's drawing more attention. Um, so those two are very hard to deal with. So it's really a compliment. So one who has a big game, it's really also because of the other one drawing more attention to in the wrong game. And I want to talk about your defensive mm -hmm. team, which had a fantastic game, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. 155 total yards given up, mm -hmm. that's minuscule right there. Mm -hmm. But they also were able to get after the quarterback and create some turnovers and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, we want to start right here by just showing how well the defense is. Yeah, Drew McCullough has really done a nice job lately on the pass rush. You know, see him ripping through right here, coming back side. Um, so he's getting better at that and has had also huge games. Uh, he had two sacks down there also uh, at Dixie, if I remember correctly. Uh, but Michael Petrovich, to see him come through, um, he's very steady. And to see that as a senior, it's a nice play f and for him to get after a quarterback. And, well, the game might have not been, might not have been a seven-point game at the mm. time, but one of the plays that stood out for me, to, mm. the defensive, was that goal line stand. Yeah. Four plays against a guy that could probably be playing center on most teams. I mean, the <laughs> guy's a huge yeah. running back there. Well, you'll see the quarterback boot naked. I believe that was on the second down. Um, really, they had the ball uh, first down and basically a foot, you know, maybe a yard. Um, and so very, they had one boot, the rest of them were inside run. And really the credit there is, first of all, the D-line, getting their pad level down, controlling the line of scrimmage. And you, you see our middle linebacker, number 13, Vincent, being excited. I mean, our defense does take a lot of pride in keeping people out of the end zone. And to see that later in the game, we're honestly, Maybe it mattered, maybe it didn't, you know. But to see them really respond uh, against a fullback that's really physical. I mean, he's got to be 265, and very much a, a load. And you'd think they'd easily be able to just give it to him and, and get a yard, you know. But they didn't because of the D-line and the linebacker pursuit. And also our secondary staying on outside on boot. And you mentioned the secondary right there. Every week we seem to talk about Caleb Singleton mm -hmm. or Bryce Pila. This week, it was Pila. I yeah. mean, the guy came through. We saw a little earlier with the interception. Second interception returned in two weeks. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. a, just playing great. Bryce Pila is up in the national stats. Um, he was GNAC player of the week. He also had a pump block. Um, so he's all over the place for us. Um, and he has five interceptions. Um, you can see the effort that he has. And the young man is becoming a better, better football player throughout the season. Uh, we feel our, our two safeties is a strong point of our defense. Caleb Singleton has six interceptions. Um, so those two really um, control a football game and cover a lot of ground. And we also give them a lot of responsibilities. Um, so they'll blitz, they'll cover, um, they'll man cover. So they're able to do a lot because they're that athletic. And obviously Bryce Pila being a GNAC player of the week, um, a pump block, huge critical point on that. And then also an interception early to, to get that 21 to zero lead. And we actually have a clip really quick here of a senior, mm. Garrett Vincent, your middle linebacker. Our plan was keep everything simple and hit as hard as we can, run as fast as we can, and just fly around. Vincent right there, once again yeah. making a play with Pila, who, man, a third of all over the field for you guys. Yeah, and Vincent's really progressed as, as a middle linebacker for us. Our, he makes all our calls, our team leader. Um, inside and then um, he's, his range on defense is getting better and better. You can see him um, ever since Battle of Seattle. He's knocking down more passes as you saw right there. Um, but he's just extremely steady and a very tough football player. You talk about making calls there. Mm -hmm. Maybe the call of the day mm -hmm. was the onside kick that you mm -hmm. had on there. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that and what you do as a coach 
Do you get final approval on that one, and what do you got to do to make that call on that? Um, yeah, first of all, our kicker, Kelly Morgan, um, has real good accuracy with all different types of kicks. You know, we practice a lot more things than we've shown to date. Um, but really what happened was we felt that that was a weakness. In, uh, we felt Kelly would, could execute that and then see Ben Merrill come down the sideline and also catch that ball um, in traffic. Um, so obviously we did it early in the football game because it was open. And yes, you know, Coach Overland won the levy knew that was probably going to be available. And, uh, and we gave him the green light on that. Well, that. That was just a huge play right there. You guys also had very good coverage on the punt, as, as we'll mm -hmm. see here in just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, getting down there. And that's been, a, to me, a very big key to this year, too. You guys might not be booing the ball as far, but that Our net putting yard, you're just not giving them a chance to do anything. Yeah. So, so, Gerard Davis, um, first of all, the pump block here again, um, control field position. The yeah, there's at least a, a, a 35 yards of gain field position with that to put our offense in a good field position um, so they can, they can score with that. The effort that Pila has um, was really that that's what allowed him to get there. Um, you know, normally you just can't get there, but you've got to be quick and fast to be able to do that. Um, Gerard Davis is coming down on special teams, especially on punt, and able to really make some very solid tackles the last couple weeks, as you see right here. Uh, very similar, you know, great collision. Then you see Josh McFarland come through, and really, he lost six or seven yards on that one play. So, so that's fantastic. You guys have, yeah, great, as we mentioned before, mm -hmm. great all around game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just great to see and see what the team is capable of mm -hmm. with all three units, three yep. units out there could execute. So, yep. want to say it was a very entertaining game. We were put on a great show for the fans mm -hmm. at that final home game of the year and sent out those 18 seniors right. Yep. So that's great. But the win is just the next step forward. Mm -hmm. You guys now have two more conference games against the two teams that are top of the GNAC standings, Humboldt State and Central Washington. And tell us a little bit about that and what possibilities are still out there if you guys come through with, with a couple wins there. Well, well, first of all, all we're thinking about is Humboldt State. Um, they're ranked ninth in our region nationally. Um, we played them in a very close game and, and didn't take care of the football in the red zone, didn't score in the red zone like we could have. Um, so that really stings for us right now, and be able to take, go down to their place, which they're packing the place and their band's loud. It'll be a, a really good a Division II environment, and our guys are excited to play a very, very good Humboldt team. And uh, we also feel like we're playing better football uh, than we did when the first time we played them. Um, we also know that they are, are also playing better football. So uh, it'll be a really, a, I believe, a close game. And for us, it's a chance to, to take that next step forward. Um, our goal is always to win a GNAC. Right now, we're behind. We're in third. Uh, if we, we need to beat Humboldt to, to move ourselves up in that race. Well, fantastic. And that, that game will be 1 o'clock mm -hmm. on this Saturday against Humboldt State. You'll be down there for those games. Um, so we hope the Wolves, could, you guys can get out there. You'll be able to listen to the game on the radio on 1340 out of Albany. And you'll also be able to hear the game on 1610 out of St. Helens. You know, for anybody that does want to make the, the nine-hour trip down there, Coach Ferg, thank you for joining me. You bet. And thank you all for watching me on this edition of Wolves Weekly.